Welcome to Trigonometry 6.3. Okay, a few different ways to do this, but uh, if we just draw our right triangle and we know the denominators um, are your um, hypotenuses, okay, uh, x is negative here, which should be in the second quadrant, so that's negative 15, and y is positive 8, and you'll get that. X cos is your cosine, which is adjacent leg, fit negative 15 over hypotenuse 17. So that's one way you could do it. So at that point, you just do your sine and cosine stuff, get all your trig functions out. So the sine of theta is obviously 8 seventeenths, and the cosecant is going to be 17 eighths. Okay? And the cosine is going to be negative 15 seventeenths, and the secant is going to be negative 17 fifteenths. And then the tangent is uh, y over x, which is going to be 8 over negative 15. And then that means the cotangent is negative 15 over 8. OK, same thing here. Let's just go ahead and go a little bit faster as we go on. Um, your denominators are the same, so that's your hypotenuse. Uh, x is your adjacent leg, and y is your uh, opposite leg from theta, and we just keep going. So the sine of theta is 3 fifths, which you just use the y co uh, coordinate and the x coordinate, 4 fifths, and you get most of this stuff done. So uh, cosecant is going to be 5 thirds, and the secant is going to be 5 fourths. Tangent is um, y over x, or 3 fourths, and the cotangent is going to be uh, four thirds. Same thing. Sine is your y coordinate, negative seven twenty fifths. So the cosecant, oops, cosecant is negative twenty five over seven, and the cosine is the x coordinate, twenty four over twenty five, and the secant is twenty five over twenty four, and the tangent is the y over x, or negative seven twenty fourths, and the cotangent is the reciprocal, 24 over negative 7. And the sine value again here is the y-coordinate, negative 12 thirteenths. If you have to draw the triangle, then draw the triangle and put everything in, uh, negative 5, negative 12, and 13. If that helps, then do that until you can go faster. Cosecant is going to be negative 13 over 12. And the cosine is the x-value, or negative 5 thirteenths. And the secant is the reciprocal, negative 13 over 5. Tangent is uh, y over x, or positive 12 fifths. Remember, tangent is negative over negative in the third quadrant, which is positive. And the cotangent is the reciprocal, 5 twelfths. OK, so um, let point B, uh, let P of T be the point on the unit circle uh, U that corresponds to T. If point P it has the given rectangular coordinates find uh, p, t plus pi. So what are we doing here? This is just saying add 180 degrees to it. So where are we at on number five? So on number five, we're in the first quadrant, okay? We're at uh, three, four, and five. And so 180 degrees would put us the other direction. And what would that be? Negative three, negative four, and positive five there. Okay, so... Um, so that would be A. So uh, A is going to be uh, negative 3 uh, fifths and negative 4 fifths. All right, and then B, we're subtracting pi. So what did we do when we added pi? We went 180 degrees this way. Well, if we subtract pi uh, from our point, aren't we in the same position? And the answer is yes. So uh, oops, B is the same as A. Now C... We're just doing the opposite of T. Okay, so on C, it is negative T. So first of all, 3 fifths and 4 fifths is in the first quadrant. This would be positive T, okay? So negative T means we're going this direction that much. So in reality now, what you have is positive 3, negative 4, and 5 for your um, 
hypotenuse. So what is our answer for C? Be uh, 3 fifths and negative 4 fifths. And then D, uh, you're going to go negative T, which is what we have on C here, right here, and then negative pi, which puts us right there. And so what is that? That's going to be negative 3 and a positive 4 and 5. So D, the answer is going to be negative 3 fifths and positive 4 fifths. Okay, let me clean this up and we'll uh, do number 6. Okay, number 6, um, A here. Uh, adding 180. Well, first of all, where are we? X is negative and Y is positive, so we are in um, the second quadrant. But if we add pi, uh, that puts us into the fourth quadrant. So X is uh, positive 8, Y is positive 15, and our hypotenuse is 17. So our X and Y are 8 fifteenths and negative 15 seventeenths. And then B, it's going to be the exact same thing because at negative pi, um, we'd go backwards this way and get the same exact answer. Now, negative T, let's draw what we're doing. So um, this is positive T. So negative T, again, where are we on number six? We're actually in the second quadrant, okay? So a negative t that much would put us into the third quadrant, okay? So what would that be? You'd still have a negative eight, you'd still, and 17 for your hypotenuse, but now y is negative. And so our new coordinates are gonna be negative eight seventeenths and negative 15 seventeenths. And d, uh, again, negative t, is going to put us here, but then we subtract pi is actually going to put us back to the first quadrant, okay, which everything is positive. So D is going to be positive 8 seventeenths and positive 15 seventeenths. Okay, the same thing for 7 and 8. So let's just uh, draw a quick picture of where we are and what's happening. So I'll do number 7 first here. We're both negative, so we're in the third quadrant. Okay, so if we add pi, we're going to be in the add or subtract pi. That puts us back to the first quadrant. So A and B are going to be both 12 thirteenths and 5 thirteenths. All right, now C is negative T. All right, so you go all the way to here, and that's your positive T. You went three quadrants, one, two, you're in the third quadrant. So negative T goes three quadrants the other direction. So one, two, three, you're gonna be in the second quadrant, which makes X negative and Y positive. So you'd be at negative 12 thirteenths, positive 5 thirteenths. Okay, and then from that point, we subtract pi. All right, so we go the opposite direction and that puts us down in the fourth quadrant. So the fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is uh, negative, okay? So x is positive, 12 thirteenths, y is negative, negative 5 thirteenths. All right, so I'll erase that and we'll do number eight. Okay, so this time I'll just put it over here. x is positive, y is negative, we are in the fourth quadrant, okay? So just if you wanna know the numbers, x is seven, uh, y is negative 24, uh, and we have a 25 unit um, hypotenuse. Okay, so now we add a pi or subtract pi that puts us both back to the second quadrant. So what happens in the second quadrant? X is negative, Y is positive. So A and B are both gonna be X is negative, negative 7 25ths, and Y is positive, 24 over 25. And then C, so the original is in the fourth quadrant. So all the way around is positive T. We go four um, uh, quadrants. So that means negative T goes one, two, three, four. So we're going to be up here, and X is still positive, but we're in the first quadrant, so everything's positive. So positive 7 25ths and positive 24 25ths. D. From that position, we subtract pi. So we're going to be 180 degrees in the other position, which puts us in the third quadrant, where x is negative and y is negative. They're both negative. So negative 7 25ths 
and negative 24 25 fifths. All right, let P be the point on the unit circle that corresponds to T. Find the coordinates of P and the exact values of the trigonometric functions of T whenever possible. All right, so you're at 2 pi. Boom, you're right here. So what are those, what's the quad, uh, coordinate? The coordinate is 1, 0. So now we have sine um, cosecant, cosine, secant, um, tangent, and cotangent. So I'm just going to do this all across the board here. All right, so the sine is going to be, the sine at 2 pi is uh, 0. Okay, the cosecant is going to be undefined because that's 1 over 0. The cosine is uh, 1 over 1 or 1, the secant is going to be 1, and the tangent will be y over x, 0 over 1 is 0, and the cotangent will be undefined. At 3 pi, negative 3 pi, so this is negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, our coordinate is negative 1, 0. So the sine is still the y value over 1. The cosecant will be the reciprocal of that or undefined. The cosine will be negative 1 over positive 1, and the secant will be 1 over negative 1. The tangent is y over x, or 0, and the cotangent is undefined. So, number 10, you're at negative pi. Well, we're right here, which is negative 1, 0, which is going to be the same as uh, 9b. So 0, u, negative 1, negative 1, 0, and u. And 6 pi, where are we? Two, four, six. I went the wrong direction, sorry. But you're still on the same even even ones here. So that's at one zero, which is the same as nine A. So zero, U, one, one, zero, and U. Alright, so let's do all of these. Where are we on these? So again, let's just draw the first one. Three pi over two is right there. What is the value? That's going to be 0, negative 1. So again, sine, cosecant, cosine, uh, secant, tangent, and cotangent. Okay, so what are our answers here? The sine is y over the hypotenuse, opposite over the hypotenuse, which is negative 1 over 1 which is negative 1. Cosecant would be 1 over negative 1. Cosine is the x value over 1. Secant is 1 over the x value, or undefined. Tangent is y over uh, x, so negative 1 over 0 is undefined, but cotangent is 0 over negative 1, or 0. All right, so negative 7 pi over 2. So we're going to go negative pi over 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7 pi over 2. So that coordinate is 0, 1. All right, so these are all the same thing, except now we're positive. So 1, 1, 0, undefined, undefined, and 0. 5 pi over 2. So 1 pi over 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the same thing, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0, undefined, undefined, 0. And negative pi over 2. We are at... 0, negative 1, which is the exact same as number 11a. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, undefined, undefined, and 0. 9 pi over 4. So pi over 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We are at square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Sine. Cosecant. Uh, cosine, secant, tangent, cotangent. So the sine is the y value, square root of 2 over 2, over the hypotenuse 1. Okay? Cosecant is the reciprocal of that. So start figuring this out. Rationalize your denominator. You get 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is the square root of 2. Okay? So the reciprocal of the square root of 2 over 2 is the square root of 2. Cosine is the x value, and it's all the same thing. Secant would be the square root of 2. 
tangent is the y over the x, which is something over itself, or 1, and cotangent is the same thing. Negative 5 pi over 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's negative 5 pi over 4. So we are at negative square root of 2 over 2 and positive square root of 2 over 2. The sine is the y value. Cosecant, again, is the reciprocal. The cosine is the negative, and the secant would be negative square root of 2. And the tangents, y over x, or negative 1, cotangent is the reciprocal, same thing. 3 pi over 4, 1, 2, 3. So again, we're at the same thing as b. So same thing, same thing, same thing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, negative 7 pi over 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're in the first quadrant. This is the same thing as part A. So 13A. All right. Now let's go ahead and do all of these. 5 pi over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're in the third quadrant. So everything is negative. So negative square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. So the sine goes cosecant. Ah, uh, gosh. Cosine, secant, tangent, cotangent. So what do we get for the sine? Is the y value negative square root of 2 over 2? Cosecant's the reciprocal, so we know the reciprocal is negative square root of 2. Cosine is the x value, and secant is, again, the same as the reciprocal. Tangent is y over x, so it's something over itself. They're both negative, so it's positive 1. The cotangent is the same thing. So negative pi over 4, we're in the fourth quadrant. So that is positive square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2 for the y. So the sine is the y value, and again, the cosecant is the reciprocal. The cosine is the x value, which is positive, and the secant would be positive square root of 2. Tangent is going to be y over x for negative 1. The cotangent is the same thing. The reciprocal. So 7 pi over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're in the fourth quadrant, same as b from the last problem. And 16b, 3 pi over, negative 3 pi over 4, 1, 2, 3. Third quadrant, same thing as 15a. So that was 15b. 15a is the same. Use a formula for negatives to find the exact value. So the sine of negative 90 degrees is the same thing as negative sine of 90 degrees. Okay? So let's think about it. Where are you at negative 90? Negative 90 degrees is your right here. What is the y value? The y value is negative 1. All right, so where are you at the sine of 90 degrees? 90 degrees is right here, which is 0, 1, but you got the negative out in front. So it's the same if it's out in front or on the degree. So you get to choose where it goes, but it's still the same thing. So the sine is negative 1. The cosine, you don't need the negative. So just as a quick refresher, 3 pi over 4, we're going negative here. 1, 2, 3. Negative 3 pi over 4 is right there. Okay, so what is that value? That is um, negative square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. So the x value is negative. Okay, if I put uh, the negative um, out in front and do a cosine of 3 pi over 4, so positive 3 pi over 4 is 1, 2, 3. Well, cosine is your x value, so it's negative both in the second and third quadrant. So you get the same answer anyway, no matter what you do. So you, it doesn't matter if you have a negative there. You can just drop it. You're going to get the same answer. So on the sine, you can move the sine, the negative out. On the cosine, you can just ignore it. All right. So the cosine value at 3 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2. Tangent, on the other hand, is sine over cosine. So at 135 degrees, negative 135, you got 90 and 45 more. So that means you have a 45 degree reference, which means you're still at the third quadrant, uh, negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, and y over x, they're the same thing. 
negative or negative is positive. Okay, so that's just positive 1. All right, again, 3 pi over 2, you can go positive or negative here because we're going to move this out in front. We'll go positive, 3 pi over 2 puts me right here at 0, negative 1. So y is negative 1, but you have a negative out that I moved out in front. Uh, so that makes it positive 1. Cosine, we don't need it. It doesn't matter. 225 is 180 and 45. So the x value is negative square root of 2 over 2. Tangent, negative pi over 4. It's right here. Again, you have a positive and a negative, and pi over 4, y over x is going to be 1, except one of them is negative. So negative 1. Negative 3 pi over 4, cotangent. Um, 1, 2, 3. So x is negative, y is negative. So it doesn't really matter. It's still going to be positive 1. Secant is 1 over the cosine at negative 45 degrees. Cosine is positive, so it doesn't really matter. It's still 1 over the square root of 2 over 2. still going to be positive, but you have to multiply by the reciprocal. You have to rationalize. So you get 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is just the square root of 2. Okay, cosecant is going to be 1 over the sine. So the reciprocal of whatever the sine is. And the negative can be out in the front. So if you like to go positive, 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 1. And since you put the negative out in the front, now remember the sine at um, negative or uh, 3 pi over 2 is going to be um, 1. Okay. In this case, negative 1, but you have a negative out in front. So that's 1. So 1 over 1 is still 1. Okay, so now was the cotangent at negative 225 degrees. Okay, so negative 225, you have 180 and 45 more. So this is a 45 degree reference. Okay, so this is what you should be thinking. So cotangent is x over y, or negative 1. The secant at negative pi. Here's negative pi. Secant is 1 over the cosine. So we, the cosine is negative 1. So 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Okay. Negative 45 degrees. Okay. So you have a positive and a negative y value. Cosecant goes with sine. So it's 1 over the sine. The sine is negative uh, square root of 2 over 2. So the reciprocal of that is going to be negative square root of 2. Verify the identity by transforming the left-hand side into the right-hand side. So again, we're trying to figure this out. The negative of your y can go out in front, so that's negative the sine of x. And the secant goes with cosine. We don't need that. So secant is 1 over the cosine of x. The negative doesn't necessarily need to be there. And does that equal negative tangent of x? And yes. So here you have negative sine of x over the cosine of x. And that is the negative tangent of x. Check. Cosecant is 1 over the sine. And again, uh, if you have 1 over the sine of negative x, you can put that negative out in front. So 1 over negative sine of x. And you have cosine of negative x, which is cosine, so we don't care about the negatives. You get the same answer no matter what. So you get cosine of x over negative sine of x which is negative cotangent of x. Cotangent of x, again, uh, you that means you have x over y, or just, just so we can plot this out, cosine of negative x, um, and that's sine of negative x, okay? So the cosine, the cosine doesn't matter if you have a negative, so that's why we have a negative cotangent. Um, so this is just a positive x over a negative x there we can move the negative out. So what do we have? Ne cosine of x over negative sine of x. Okay, that's all over the cosecant, which is with sine, one over the sine of negative x. And again, we could pull the negative out in front. And when we do that, the negative goes away, cancels with the negative on top. So we have cosine over the sine, all over one over the sine. 
So you take the top, cosine over sine, times the reciprocal of the bottom, sine over 1. Sines reduce out, leaving just cosine of x. Okay, secant goes with cosine, so it's 1 over the cosine of x, and we don't need the negative with cosine. Tangent is sine of negative x over cosine of negative x. Again, you don't need the negative on uh, the cosine, so that's just cosine of x, and we'll pull the negative out in front of that sine. So now we have 1 over cosine all over negative sine over cosine. Take the top, 1 over cosine, times the reciprocal of the bottom, cosine over negative sine, and you get 1 over negative sine, which is negative cosecant of x. Check. Okay, 1 over cosine of negative x, we don't need it. We don't need the uh, negative, so that's just 1 over cosine of x. And then tangent is sine of negative x over cosine of negative x. Again, you don't need the negative on the cosine, so and this negative we can put out in front. So what do we really have here? 1 over cosine minus or plus the sine over cosine times the sine of negative x. And a negative we can put out in front. And again, now we have 1 minus the cosine plus sine over cosine times the sine. Does that equal the cosine of x? Well, what do we have here? We have 1 over the cosine plus sine squared over cosine. 1 plus the sine squared over the cosine. Well, 1 plus sine squared is cosine squared all over cosine. So one of these cosines reduced with 1 on the top, leaving just the cosine of x. Cotangent, again, is cosine of negative x. So we'll just say positive x over the sine of negative x. So let's just put the negative out in front there. Times cosine of negative x is still just positive x plus the sine of negative x. So we'll put the negative out in front, making this minus the sine of x. All right, so here we have cosine squared over negative sine minus sine. So get a common denominator by multiplying by sine over sine. Then we get cosine squared minus um, sine squared uh, all over negative uh, sine. I'm sorry, we've got to multiply by a negative sine here to make it the same. So that's positive sine on the bottom, <clears throat> and this would be a positive uh, sine on the top. So that's 1 over the sine, which is the... we still got a negative sine here. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah, this is supposed to be negative sine on the bottom. Uh, so that should be negative sine. You have a negative sine on the bottom here and a negative sine on there, so this should be negative sine at the bottom, which makes that negative cosecant, or excuse me, negative cosecant of x. So on this uh, uh, problem, complete the statement by referring to the graph of the function. So a sine function, which we talk about in class, goes like this, okay? And as x goes to 0, which would be right here, what does the y value do? The sine of x. What does the sine of x do? As x goes to 0, the sine of 0. All right, so we're thinking of the sine of 0. Well, on the graph, the sine of 0 is going to be at 0. Okay, on the unit circle, um, as x goes to 0, as x is here, right there. Where are we on the unit circle as x goes to 0? We're there and there. Well, what is the sine value um, of 0? Okay. Okay, and we're talking about in this position, remember, these are degrees, not um, the x-coordinate. Uh, so this is in the degree position. So the sine of 0, and if it's not degrees, it's radians, it's still in the same position over here. What is the y value at that position? Well, it's 0. Okay. Then as you go to negative 
negative means this way, pi over 4, okay, what is the y value uh, when the sign, you're at the sign of negative pi over 4. So this is the sign of negative pi over 4. What is the y value at negative pi over 4? Okay, the y value is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. And I find it easier to think about this, oops, this answer more than I do looking at the graph. So at negative pi over 4, you're over here, which would be negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so um, now let's go 28. What is the sine value at negative pi over 2? So think about that. Let's just use the unit circle. At negative pi over 2, you're here. What's the y value? That'd be negative 1. All right, and the next one, the sine of pi over 6. Now, this little symbol here means as you're approaching from the left, from the negative side, it doesn't really matter what is the y value at the sine of pi over 6. It will matter when you're dealing with asymptotes, which we'll get to. So pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So right there, what's the y value? Well, that is positive 1 half. Okay, so as x approaches pi over 4, so as we go to pi over 4, positive pi over 4 from the positive side, x, what is the x value? The cosine of pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. As x goes to 3 pi over 2, what is the cosine at 3 pi over 2? Well, where's 3 pi over 2? Right there. What is the x value? x value is 0. Okay, 30. As x goes to pi, what is the cosine? of pi. So you're at pi. What is the x value? x value would be negative 1. And um, negative pi over 3, what's the cosine of negative pi over 3? That's negative 60, so down here. So you should be thinking long leg and short leg. And the cosine would be the short leg. So this is 1 half. And in the fourth quadrant, x is positive. Okay, so if we look at the tangent, um, the uh, typical graph of tangent, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, looks like this. So as x goes to pi, oops, all right, pi would be right there, 3 pi over 2 is here. So x, as x goes to pi, what is the tangent of pi? So on a unit circle, that is going to be negative 1, 0. And tangent is y over x. So this should be 0, which on this graph it is. Okay? And then b, as tangent goes to pi over 2 from the right, so we're going this direction, it approaches... Um, negative infinity. Okay, so what does that mean? If we go to pi over 2 up here, and as it approaches it, what is y over x? That would be undefined, right? Okay, uh, 32. As x goes to pi over 4, so at tangent of pi over 4, what is happening? So on our unit circle, pi over 4 is here, okay? So on that unit circle, the tangent's positive 1, okay? On the tangent graph, so here's the tangent graph, pi over 4 is right there, okay? And as x goes to pi over 4, okay, tangent is 1. All right, diff just different ways to think about it. Uh, so now this is important. Uh, other than uh, sines and cosine, this is what's important here. So negative pi over 2. So let's use the bottom graph here at first. So at negative pi over 2, approaching from um, the negative side. So um, this is what's happening here. So as x approaches negative pi over 2 from the left, that's what negative means, okay, then we are approaching uh, 
undefined, okay, and undefined uh, information, okay. So at negative pi over two, which is on the unit circle, right here. So opposite over adjacent negative one over zero, that's undefined. But we can see as we're approaching on the graph, on the bottom graph here, we're approaching the asymptote, which is an undefined uh, position. All right, 33, pi over six cotangent is x over y. And at pi over six, we are at 30 degrees. Um, that would be the long leg over the short leg, square root of three over two over one half, which is just the square root of three. Now, cotangent um, as x goes <clears throat> to zero. So the cotangent, excuse me, cotangent of zero. So where are we? We're at zero right here on the unit circle graph. Cotangent is x over y, one over zero. So that's undefined. Okay, let's just keep going. Negative pi over four. So cotangent again of negative pi over four. So that would be a positive 7 pi over 4. Okay. And so um, y is negative and x is positive. Again, those are square root of 2 over 2s, both of those. So it's x over y, so it doesn't matter. It's negative 1. All right. And you're not approaching anything from the left or the right. Uh, it doesn't say that. It just says negative pi over 4. This up here is what we're talking about approaching from the negative side to pi. So at pi, on our unit circle here, right there, we have negative 1, 0. And the cotangent of that, approaching from the negative side, okay, it doesn't really matter. It's based on the other graph. You can't have um, the x over the y here, negative 1 over 0. That's undefined. As long as you can understand that from the unit circle, fine. You still need to know the waves. All right, 35. The secant of pi over 2. Okay, now these have asymptotes, secants and cosecants. So uh, as you graph those, um, we can look at it uh, from this point of view, pi over 2 here on the unit circle. And this is um, 0, 1. So secant goes with cosine. So 1 over the cosine of pi over 2. All right, well, what is the cosine at pi over 2? The cosine is 0, right? So 1 over 0 is undefined. doesn't matter if you're approaching from the left or to the right. It's still undefined, okay? Now, as x goes to 0, here we are in the unit circle, the secant, or 1 over cosine of 0. Cosine is the x value, which is 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. One thing I want to... I'll help you understand about the undefineds. Um, at pi over 2, it is undefined. But as it's approaching pi over 2, it's it's either going to positive infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so uh, let me uh, address the uh, cosine curve here. Here's the cosine curve. All right. And then there's these asymptotes. Okay. And I'm going to do the secant curve in blue. Here's the secant curve. Okay. All right. So um, this is your 2 pi. Um, this is pi. And um, pi over 2 is right here. Okay. So as it's approaching pi over 2 uh, from the left, okay, it's still going to positive infinity. So that's how that's the answer that they really want to give you. So the unit circle doesn't help you in this respect. You you have to know these graphs to, to go on. So I'll, I'll continue to draw both of them. Okay, so we have the secant graph again. So let's just go ahead and, and do that here. Uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And we're going to pi over 2. All right, so I draw the cosine curve to help me draw my secant curve. All right, and at where everything changes directions from being uh, concave or convex, um, that's where you're drawing uh, your asymptote. Okay, so here's the secant curve. So now let's answer the question. Approaching pi over 2 from the positive direction, 
we get negative infinity. Okay, at pi over 2, it's going to be undefined. That's important to know as well. All right, so as we approach pi over 4, so pi over 4 is right here. There, we're wanting to know what the answer is. It says the secant of pi over 4. So that's one of the cosine of pi over 4. And we know pi over 4 is the square root of 2, square root of 2 over 2. So 1 over that means it's going to be 1 times the reciprocal, or 2 over the square root of 2, which, if we rationalize, gives us 2 square root of 2 over 2, or the square root of 2 is the answer. All right, so cosecant goes with sine. So let's draw sine. These are 1s negative 1, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All right, and we're going to be going at 0, so it doesn't really matter. Here's the sine curve, which we did the other day. And now we have, um, put our asymptotes in here. I'm going to use a yellow line for the asymptotes. Um, and the sine curve keeps going, so if we go backwards the other way, negative pi over 2, it's going like this, okay, and then down. Um, okay, so cosecant is, um, well, let's just go ahead and draw the graph in blue. This is your cosecant curve, just like the secant, but it's shifted. So cosecant is 1 over the sine of 0. The sine at 0 on the unit circle uh, is 0. Sine is the y value, so it's 0. So 1 over 0 is undefined. Okay, but what it's asking is what happens as x approaches 0 from the negative side. So from the negative side, as we approach 0, our blue line, which is cosecant, is going to negative infinity. Okay, now as x approaches pi over 4, all right, so this is pi over 2, here's pi over 4. So what is that value going to be? We also know that's pi uh, square root 2 over 2. It's positive, but it's the reciprocal, from the, just like the last problem. So the reciprocal is going to be the square root of 2 after you rationalize. Okay. Cosecant again uh, goes with the sine. So here's your sine, 1 and negative 1. And that's pi over 2, uh, pi. So we're going to be using pi over 2 and pi, so I'll just mark those on the graph. Okay, so cosecant is 1 over the sine. Okay, so basically uh, pi on the unit circle is uh, 0 for, for sine. Okay, so 1 over 0 is undefined. But at pi here, for cosecant, again, let's uh, put our asymptotes in and draw in blue cosecant. Okay, these actually touch, by the way. Okay, so at pi, approaching pi from the positive side, um, what is happening with the blue line? It's going to negative infinity. So yes, we, we need to know what's going on. Um, as x goes to pi over 2, so again on the unit circle, pi over 2 is here, sine is 1. Right. Notice there's no going from the right or to the left because there's no asymptote there. That's the only time they, only reason they put the positives and negatives in there um, for direction. So it's just pi over 2. So um, the sine value at pi over 2 is 1, and the cosecant's 1 over that. So the answer is going to be 1. And notice that's where we have right here. The y value is 1 at pi over 2 for on the cosecant curve and on the sine curve. Okay, refer to the graph of the sine of x. Okay, so let's draw these. Here's your sine of x. And as we need things, I'll draw them in. And you can do the same thing. And the cosine curve is the same, just shifted. Okay, and these all go to 2 pi. All right, so the sine of x equals negative 1. So we're doing this backwards. So where does the sine equal negative 1? right there. And what, what are these markings? We have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. These are equal increments of 4, just like you're going around the ax, uh, the, uh, um, the unit circle, every quadrant. 
there are four quadrants, so pi over two is the, goes to the first quadrant, okay? So where is that? That's three pi over two. So that's the answer for when y is negative one. Again, on a unit circle, where is y negative one? Down here at three pi over two. So let's answer it with the unit circle on, the, on number 40. Where is the y value one? Up here at pi over two. Now let's look at our um, um, sine curve at the bottom here. Pi over two, which is right here, the y value is one. Okay, now the problem is it's asking, it gives you an interval to give answers on. Okay, so the interval is to four pi, from zero to four pi. So this just keeps going to four pi. So there's another spot where the y value is negative one for number 39. All right, what would that be? Well, if we just add two pi to that, that gets us to that position, okay? Or you could just figure it out. Uh, two pi is right here, and then another pi over two. Um, so two pi is four pi over two. Add another pi over two gives us five pi over two. 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi, 7 pi over 2. So our answer is 3 pi over 2 and 7 pi over 2. All right, and where is y1 at the top? Well, again, it started at pi over 2. We go to 2 pi, and it goes to this next one, which we already figured out, which is 5 pi over 2. So those are your two answers for each of those. Okay, so again, we're going from... Um, 0 to 4 pi. Okay, so there's 2 pi, there's 4 pi. I'm not going to put the others in yet because the denominators change. It helps to change the denominators as you're doing these. So where is uh, the y value uh, 1 half? Okay, it means it's the short leg. So the short leg is positive 1 half. So that would be at 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. Okay. So you have pi over 2 here, and then you have those 3 in the middle of the quadrant. So pi over 6 is right there. So there's 1 half. So it's going to be at 1 half here, here, and there. So we need four answers for this one. So we have pi over 6, and this one is 5 pi over 6, which you should know by now, that's pi. And I'm just doing 30 degrees less, okay? And then you go to here, 2 pi, okay? If we're using our 6s for our denominator, that would be 12 pi over 6, plus another pi over 6 is 13 pi over 6. So we have 5 pi over 6 and 13 pi over 6. Now you understand why I use the denominators. And then this one right here, would be 3 pi, which over 6 would be 18 pi over 6. If we subtract a pi over 6 to get back to that point, it's 17 pi over 6. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, what about negative pi over 2? When is the y value, when is the y value negative pi over 2? So this is a pi over 4 reference number. Where is it negative? Where is the y value negative? Well, it's going to be negative in the third and fourth quadrants, okay, uh, at the pi over 2. So remember 1, 3, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So that's in the third quadrant, which is going to be, um, if you think of it, this is your first quadrant, that's your second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So uh, in between pi and 3 pi over 2, you have your 3. And in between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, over, uh, 2 pi, you have your 3. All right, so that's your 5 pi over 4. And this one is your um, 7 pi over 4. Okay, so again, 5 pi over 4 is our first answer. 7 pi over 4 is the second answer. And then, of course, you have these here. you got to figure out those. So if we do by over 4, the 3 pi, let's mark these in here, 3 pi, and to get it over 4 would be 12 pi over 4. 
Okay, so add another pi over 4. Gives me 13 pi over 4. Okay, that's that one. And 4 pi, to get it to be over 4, is 16 pi over 4. And we subtract a pi over 4 to get to here. That gives us 15 pi over 4. So you have to use uh, your understanding of fractions, which you guys have gotten much better. All of you have gotten much better. You've kind of been forced to. And there's not much more to fractions than this. Okay, let's move on. Cosine of, where is the x value 1? So let's look at the cosine curve. Cosine curve starts at 1. And we're going from 0 to 4 pi. So here's the cosine curve. Okay. And that's 2 pi. And then we start again. And that would be 4 pi. Okay. Now, where is the x1? Well, on the unit circle, it's right there, positive 1. So it would be at 0, right? So 0 is possibility. So 0 is one of our answers. And on our curve here, that's where it's at. 0. So where is it positive 1? There's going to be three answers, here and here. So what are they? We see what they are. This is an easy one. 0 and 2 pi and 4 pi. What about negative 1? Well, at pi and 3 pi. So on the unit circle, here's how you do this. At negative 1, what do we got to get there? By pi's. Well, that's 1 pi. And we got to go around to 4 pi, so it hits, hits there twice, right? Well, what are our two answers? Pi and 3 pi. Different ways of looking at it. Okay, cosine curve again. Oops, it's got to go up a little bit more. All right, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. So that is a 5 over 4 reference number. So where, it, and it's positive, so on a unit circle, x is positive, square root 2 over 2 there and there in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So square root 2 over 2 is uh, 0.71. This is 1. So 0 0.71 is about right here. So we're looking there, 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 and there. All right. Um, this is pi over 2 here. So pi over 4, let's just, we are in which quadrant here? This is our first quadrant. This is our second quadrant, our third, and our fourth. That helps. Okay. If we're in our first quadrant, then that's just pi over 4. That's easy. Uh, if we're in the fourth quadrant, that should be 7 pi over 4. You should know that. 1, 3, 5, 7, remember? Now we have to get to the others. So 2 pi, make it the denominator the same. That would be 8 pi over 4. And we're going to add another pi over 4, which is 9 pi over 4. The other way to... Well, I don't, I don't want to go into it. All right, so let's do... We are in uh, right next to uh, the 4 pi here in the fourth quadrant of the f going around the second time. So 4 pi over, got to have it over 4, so that's 16 pi over 4. So subtract 1 gives us 15 pi over 4. Now we have the cosine of negative 1 half. So at negative 1 half, we're right, let's just do it in yellow, and we'll do blue. Negative 1 half is right here. So you have four answers that you're looking at. We've got to figure those out. So on the unit circle, where is the x value? Negative 1 half. That's a short leg reference, and x has to be negative. The cosine is negative. So we are in the second quadrant and the third quadrant for x to be negative. So what are those references? Those are 30-degree references. Those would be 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Right, so this is your 5 pi over 6 over here. Let's just do it in blue, I guess. 5 pi over 6 and your 7 pi over 6. Okay, just past the pi. So this is um, repeating and it is in an interval. So, so just shy of 3 pi is our next one. Just like just shy of pi was our first one. Okay, and then just past 3 pi will be the next one, just like just past pi was our other one. You could add 2 pi to it because the interval of a cosine 
is 2 pi units, and it's repetitive. So if we take and go from 5 pi over 6 to this point, this is 2 pi units long because it's a repetition. So instead of just doing what I was doing before, let's just take 5 pi over 6 uh, plus 2 pi. And guess what? You're going to have to get a common denominator, which makes it 12 pi over 6. So our next answer is going to be 17 pi over 6. All right. So that would be this position. You could do the same thing to 7 pi over 6, but let's do what we did before. We're at 3 pi, and we got to add another pi over 6. Again, 3 pi over 1 plus another pi over 6 is what we're doing. So make it 18 pi over 6. That's 3 pi. Plus pi over 6 is 19 pi over 6. Different ways of doing it. Okay, tangent of x. So let's draw the tangent of x for these. Negative pi over 2. And they give us an interval here. Negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Which is pretty difficult here. That's going to be up here. Pi over 2. That'll be pi. And 3 pi over 2 is here. Now, what happens at those intervals? These are asymptotes. Okay. Now let's draw the graph. Okay, so that's the graph of tangent. Now, tangent of x is 1, so we know the tangent of x to be positive 1 when x and y are the same. Remember, it's y over x. Well, the only way it can be 1 is if they're the same, which is your pi over 4 references. So a negative over a negative is positive, and a positive over a positive is positive. So first and third quadrants. All right, so what is that? Well, it'd be pi over 4, which is right here. Okay. That's going to be 1. So what are our answers going to be? 1 there and 1 there. All right, so how do we get that? So you have to go into the third quadrant, which is past pi. Right? Okay, so we're going past pi, and we add another pi over 4. Well, what is that? Remember, 1, 3, 5, 7. This is 5 pi over 4, which is what that position would be. If you added pi over 4 to pi, you'd get 5 pi over 4. All right. Now, where is it the square root of 3? Okay. That comes from this. Square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. The 2s reduce out, and you have the square root of 3. So this is y, and that's x. Square root of 3 over 2 is your long leg. Square root, excuse me, 1 over 2 is your short leg. And it's positive. Both of them are positive, or they're both negative. So you got to be careful here. So we're talking first and third quadrant again. So the long leg is your y, and your short leg is your x. So we're talking a 60 degree reference here, and also in the third quadrant. So 60 degree reference is pi over 3, and uh, 4 pi over 3. So pi over 3 is the first one. Okay, so which would be... And if this is pi over 2, pi over 3 is right there. should be about right there. I don't have them drawn quite right. And then again, in the third quadrant, um, it's going to be right here. Okay, so I got, them all. I got my graph a little off. It's not accurate. So these are the two answers for this one. All right, tangent of x is 0. Let's just, uh, again, that's negative pi over 2. Pi over 2, negative 1, 1, doesn't really matter where those are. And that's pi, and 3 pi over 2. So it goes like this. Uh, let's see here. Where is the tangent 0? Where y over x is equal to 0, meaning y has to be 0. Anything uh, 0 over anything is 0. So where is y 0? on the unit circle. Well, at 0 and pi. At 0 and pi. And those are the only possibilities. Okay, so on this graph down here, it's easy to see those. You'd have to graph this to remind yourself. It's not that difficult. All right, so negative 1 over the square root of 3. Here's how you do this. Put 2's underneath everything. So when it was the square root of 3, you do remember that's the square root of 3 over 1. So put 2 underneath each thing. That's what we did on the last problem. On this one, put 2 underneath each of these. 
and that gives you what you need. So the short leg and the long leg. Short leg is negative. And again, this is tangent, so y is negative, and the short leg, and x is the positive. Um, the long leg on a unit circle, y is negative, and x is positive, you're in the fourth quadrant. Okay, but you don't know if the negative is really in the top. So we always, with tangents, use 180 degrees. So we're either in the fourth quadrant or the second quadrant. And on this other curve, uh, the other graph, the bottom graph, you'll notice that it's right. Okay. So short leg is negative one half, that's y, and the long leg is your x. So really, this is the one we're talking about. X is negative, excuse me, and y is positive here, and 180 degrees the other way. X is positive, y is negative. So those are 30 degree references. This one is 5 pi over 6, and this one should be 11 pi over 6. So let's look at our graph at the bottom. So where is it negative um, short leg over long leg? So negative 1 over the square root of 3 is negative 5.8. So oh, somewhere right in here. So if we just draw a line here, where do we hit? We hit here and here. Okay. So why... Are we not using 11 pi over 6? Because our interval doesn't go to that position. 11 pi over 6 is right here because we have to go to 2 pi on a typical interval. But we stopped at 3 pi over 2. So we're not using the 11 pi over 6. The other thing is, on a unit circle, tangent actually should start at negative pi over 2 and go around. And yet there's more to that, which we'll get to later. So we have to figure out what this one is, all right? So let's go to pi and subtract, all right? So this is supposed to be uh, what's just under pi. That would be our 5 pi over 6 value. So 5 pi over 6, let's just write down here. 5 pi over 6 is our first answer. That's this position here. So what are we doing? We took pi and we went backwards a 30 degree reference. So if we go to zero and we go back a 30 degree reference, it's negative pi over six. So those would be your answers that we have here. Okay. Okay, so the first one is the sine. We're going from, watch it, negative two pi to two pi. All right, so these are four, um, excuse me, two intervals from negative two pi to two pi, and it's the sine curve. So here's what the sine curve looks like positive and you just got to go the other other direction here okay so that's one and that's negative one so those are our intervals all right so now it's saying where y um excuse me part a y equals a part b is y is greater than a and then part c so there's three answers we're given here so let's just focus on part a first where a is equal to y so part a um a equals the sine of x, and A is 1 half, so 1 half. Where does the sine of x equal 1 half? Or where does y equal 1 half? Because the sine is y, right? All right, so y is the short leg. It's 1 half on our unit circle. It's positive. It's 1 half. Short leg is there. It's also there. So this is pi over 6, and this is 5 pi over 6. All right, so let's look and see what we have here. So pi over 6, and this is pi, 5 pi over 6 is here, and pi over 6 is there. So these are your halves. But you also got to get these first two that are way over here. Okay, so this is your negative pi. And if we go left more, that would be negative 7 pi over 6. And this right here is pi over 6 shy of negative 2 pi, or negative 11 pi over 6. So what are our answers? Negative 11 pi over 6, uh, negative 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Oops, I forgot the, the pi over 6 one here. Pi over 6. 
Okay, so the next one is part B is uh, y has to be greater than a. So we're we're still doing the same thing. So y has to be above the value of a. All right, if a is one half, then we have our positions here. And where is the y value greater than that? So we have an interval, uh, an interval between here where this curve is above uh, the one half. So you can't do this on a unit circle. All right. It makes sense after you've drawn it, after you get your answers. Okay. So what is that interval? So you're going to go, these intervals are, are, all you have to do is put um, x in between. Okay. So you have, uh, negative 11 pi over 6 less than x less than uh, negative 7 pi over 6. And then you have also um, pi over 6 less than x less than uh, 5 pi over 6. All right, now part C, where is it less than um, a? So now we're talking about the interval... Uh, I'll do it in yellow. This interval is less than a, and then you have this curve here. All of that's less than a, and this one. So we have three intervals here. So uh, this goes from, this is part C, negative 2 pi less than x less than negative 11 pi over 6. Oops, grab the 11. Negative. <laughs> okay. Negative 11 pi over 6. And then you have the next interval from negative 7 pi over 6, less than x, less than, goes all the way to, what is this value here? That's going to be pi over 6. And then the next interval is 5 pi over 6, less than x, less than 2 pi. Okay, and we probably should put an equal sign um, here because technically this, that negative 2 pi, it keeps going. Uh, so it's included at that point. And in our interval here, these are included. And also at 2 pi, should have an equal sign. If you got those numbers, that's pretty amazing. All right, let's do the cosine curve. All right, cosine. Uh, we're going from 0 to 4 pi. So cosine starts at 1. Is the first one, that's 2 pi, and then does it again, and that's 4 pi. So there's the square root of 3 over 2, so this is part A, when y is equal to it. Oops, not equal. Part A, y is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Where is the cosine? Where is the x value, the long leg? This is the long leg value. And it's positive. So the long leg would be, again, a pi over 6 value. Also, x is positive in the fourth quadrant at 11 pi over 6. So on the curve at the bottom here, um, square root of 3 over 2 is 0 0.87, which is right here. That's going to be pi over 6. And it's going to be right there, which is... Um, 11 pi over 6. But then we got to figure this out. So we got to take 2 pi and add another pi over 6. So 12 pi over 6, you get a common denominator. 12 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 13 pi over 6. So our answer in part A is 11, uh, excuse me, pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. And we said uh, 13 pi over 6. And then it's going to be right here again. So 4 pi minus pi over 6. Or you could take 11 pi over 6 plus another 2 pi because your interval is 2 pi units long. Okay, so 12 pi over 6. That will get us to that point. Or 23 pi over 6. Now using the same curve here, part B was that y is greater than a. So we're looking at the yellow curve from 1 to this, including 1 again, and from 11 pi over 6 to, these are open circles there, 
to uh, the uh, 13 pi over 6. And this one to 4 pi, including 4 pi. All right, so what are those? Well, from 0, uh, oops, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to pi over 6. Not less than or equal to. Less than pi over 6. And then you have uh, 11 pi over 6, less than x, less than 13 pi over 6. And then you have the last one, 23 pi over 6, less than x, less than or equal to 4 pi. Now notice the cosine changes from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, or from 0 to 4 pi to negative 2 pi to 2 pi. So they shifted it. Again, this is 1 and that's negative 1. Okay, so this would be negative 2 pi. All right, so where is a negative 1 half? So part A, y is negative 1 half. Where is the x value? Cosine meaning x. Where And this x is just representing a, a degree or radians, okay? When I say x, that's I'm not referring to that this right here, okay? When I say the x value, I'm talking about cosine. Okay, so where's the x negative 1 half? Where's the x, the short leg? And it's negative, so that means it has to be over here. So the short leg has to be in the second and third quadrants. Well, what are those? Those would be uh, 60 degree references. So this is 2 pi over 3. Oops, not 6. Just used to write in 6. 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. You need to know those that well, so figure it out. All right. So technically, those are our two answers in the positive from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so you're in the second uh, quadrant. Remember, this is first, second, third, and fourth quadrant. Same thing over here. And if we divide all these up, this is the first quadrant, second quadrant. I'm uh, missing something here. Sorry, first, second, third, and fourth. Okay. Um, so in, uh, from 0 to 2 pi, we have these first two answers. 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. But we need the negatives. So where is this? Negative 1 half is down here. So just draw it uh, like that. Open dots, open dots, open dots, open dots. Okay, so now what are all those values? We just found 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Okay. So let's find these right here. Um, if we're going left, we'd go left, negative 2 pi over 3. All right. And then negative 4 pi over 3 would get us the next value. It's all symmetrical. Okay, so what are the final answers? Okay, so uh, B, uh, part B, um, sorry, is where y is greater than a. So we're talking about, uh, we'll do it in blue this time, down to here, and then to there again, and there. So now we got to label these. Now this is going to be included here and there. Okay, so what are those answers? So from uh, negative 2 pi less than or equal to uh, the first one, uh, excuse me, x less than uh, negative 4 pi over 3. And then our next interval would be from negative 2 pi over 3 less than x less than 2 pi over 3. And the final interval would be uh, from 4 pi over 3 less than x less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay, now c. What was C? C was when it's when it's less than A. So now we're looking at the bottom one. I'll use yellow on the bottom one. This one here. Just two intervals. So what are the answers? That'd be negative 4 pi over 3, less than x, less than negative 2 pi over 3. And the next interval would be 2 pi over 3, less than x, less than 4 pi over 3. 
Now the sine curve from 0 to 4 pi. Sine curve, that's 2 pi. Do it again. There's 4 pi. 1 and negative 1. So part A, you're at negative square root of 2 over 2. So where, oops, sine. So where's the y value? Negative. And this is a pi over 4 reference number. Okay. So where's the y value? Negative here and there. So remember 1, 3, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. And the third and fourth quadrants. So uh, negative. Uh, square root of 2 over 2 is negative 0.71. So about right there. So here, 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 and here. Okay. So we got the first two. Uh, 5 pi over 4. And 7 pi over 4. And the second two. Uh, this is 3 pi here. So we could add 2 pi to each of those. Or um, you could take and change it to 12 pi over 4 and add pi over 4 that would get you to this position so 13 pi over 4 and 4 pi uh, make it over 4 would be 16 pi over 4 and subtract a pi over 4 gives you 15 pi over 4 all right so those are your numbers now we got to put it in the intervals so part b is where is y uh, greater than a where is it above it uh, so that would be from here to there, and that one, and that one. There's three of these. Okay, so from zero, uh, including zero, okay, less than or equal to x, less than uh, the first one, which is 5 pi over 4. The second one would be from 7 pi over 4, less than x, less than the next one, 13 pi over 4. And the final one would be from 15 pi over 4, less than x, less than or equal to 4 pi. And then part C, we'll do in red. That was y. When is it uh, less than a? So we're talking about the, the bottom curves here. So we're going from uh, 5 pi over 4, less than x, less than 7 pi over 4. And then finally, the 13 pi over 4, less than x, less than 15 pi over 4. Okay, so now we're shifting uh, everything at this point. Uh, pretty simple stuff here. Um, do it in black. Here's your sine function, typical sine function. This is outside of the function, so it's raising everything by 2. So if that's our normal uh, graph, oops. Um, if we raise everything up two units, uh, let me draw that a little bit uh, smaller here. That's one, and that's negative one. Everything moves up two units. So we're starting from zero, we're starting at two, and it'll go up to three. So what I'm saying is this part right here shifts up two units. Okay. So now it looks like this. All right, and then if we do the cosine curve, let's erase that and do the cosine curve. Cosine curve starts at one, and ends at one, it goes down to negative one. We shift up three units. <laughs> okay, I need to do that smaller again. Okay. This is one, that's negative one. So again, we're talking about this right here, the whole thing shifting up three units. So it's two, three, four. So it starts at four, goes down to two and back up again. So everything shifted up two units. So this shifted up to two units, or three units, one, two, three. This point shifted up three units, one, two, three. Everything shifts up three units. So just take each individual point and move them up. Now, cosine of x and then minus two. Okay, so now we're shifting that down two units. Okay, so the cosine curve here starts out like this. It goes to two pi, okay? 
So we're going down two units. So one, two, the bottom of my curve will be here. The beginning starts there and ends one, two, here. So just all you got to do is that. The sine curve goes down one unit. So the sine curve looks like this. Okay, two pi. Here's all your points. Goes down to uh, one unit. So this goes down to here. This one goes to there. This one goes here. This one goes there. This one goes here. There you go. Tangent goes up one. So what does the tangent curve look like again? Here is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. The typical tangent curve looks like this. If we're moving up one unit, then this is all you got to do. Okay. And you should be able to figure out where that goes through the x-axis, but that's all right. Oops. Now cotangent. Cotangent actually... Oops. But it goes the opposite direction there, okay? Um, and it's shifted down one. So this point goes down to negative one. So we don't know where that goes through the x-axis, but we can figure it out. All right, now we're going to do secant. So secant goes with cosine. So we're dealing with the cosine curve here. Here's the cosine curve, all right, all the way to 2 pi. And again, um, That's your asymptotes for the secant, and in blue will be the actual secant curve. And what's happening? We're dropping it down two units. So this, we're going to do it in red finally, drops down to here. This point, that's negative one. This point drops down to negative three. Okay, you still have your asymptotes. So we can draw this part. And this goes like this. And then um, this part goes down two units to there. So it goes like this. Oh, I said I'd do it in red. So the red curve is the shifted secant curve. Okay. And then you got cosecant, which is the, uh, like the sine curve. Okay. And it is shifting up one, but let's draw um, the cosecant curve first in blue. Here's the cosecant curve. Now let's shift it in red one unit up. So this goes up to two. This one goes up uh, to the origin. And so this is what it looks like in red. Okay, good. Find the intervals between negative 2 pi and 2 pi, which the given function is increasing or decreasing. Okay, so secant is um, the reciprocal of the cosine. So let's draw the cosine. I'm going to draw this fairly large here. Okay, so cosine um, starts at 1, goes to negative 1. 2 pi, but it goes backwards to negative 2 pi. Okay, so where is it increasing? So as we go to the right, this is going down. Oh, uh, we got to draw the um, asymptotes. And those asymptotes are where it starts to increase or decrease as well. All right, so let's do this in blue. Here is the secant curve in blue. Now, where is the secant increasing? It's increasing, and an increasing meaning going left to right here is increasing. So it goes from 2 pi um, interval here. We're including it because we're starting there because uh, it actually continues to go on to the left. Negative 2 pi to what? What is this one? Well, these are all your typical values. This is a pi, this is 3 pi over 2, pi over 2, 0, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2. 
So it's from two pi over two, from two pi to negative three pi over two, not including negative three pi over two. All right, and it's increasing um, down here at the bottom from negative three pi over two, not including negative three pi over two, all the way to negative pi. Okay, including pi. Okay, because it's it's solid right there. Okay. And then from uh, increasing next from zero, including zero, to pi over two, and not including pi over two because that's an asymptote. And then increasing uh, from pi over two, again, not including it, all the way up to pi, including pi. And that's the last time it increases. Now, where does it decrease? We'll do decreasing in red. It's decreasing from pi, negative pi, including negative pi, to negative pi over 2, not including negative pi over 2. It's decreasing from negative pi over 2, not including it, all the way to 0, including 0. And then it's decreasing from pi, including pi, to 3 pi over 2. And then again from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, including 2 pi. That was a big problem. All right, I'm going to erase all that, and we'll do the cosecant. Okay, so I went and drawn the sine curve, and then I put the asymptotes in and used the blue for the cosecant. So this would be cosecant here. So part A is where is it increasing. We'll do it in blue. It's increasing from negative 3 pi over 2, including 3 pi over 2 to negative pi, okay, not including negative pi. Then it's increasing again uh, from negative pi to negative pi over 2, including pi over 2. It's increasing from pi over 2, including pi over 2, all the way to pi, not including pi. And then again, it's increasing from pi to 3 pi over 2. Okay, so now in red, where is it decreasing? It's decreasing from negative 2 pi all the way to negative 3 pi over 2, including 3 pi over 2. It's decreasing again from negative pi over 2 to including pi over, negative pi over 2, sorry, all the way to 0. And then it's decreasing from, whoops, from 0 to pi over 2, including pi over 2. And then from 3 pi over 2, including it, all the way to 2 pi. Now we got to do the same thing with tangent. So a tangent here. So let's draw the tangent curve. Um, and we're going from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. All right, so first of all, the tangent curve from uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. This is the tangent curve, okay, going through at 0. All right, and then <clears throat> it goes, let's see, so another pi value. And then, so this is pi here. And this would be 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Stopping there at 2 pi. And then we just go backwards the other way. So uh, negative pi over 2 to negative 3 pi over 2. So it goes through at negative pi. And then negative 2 pi is where it starts. Obviously, it's back here, but we don't, we're not using that. All right, so that's our interval. So where is it increasing? Well, it's increasing on all of these intervals, and it's not decreasing at all. So here's the interval. Um, we'll do it in blue. Negative 2 pi, including 2 pi, all the way to negative 3 pi over 2 not including 3 pi over 2. But then it goes from negative 3 pi over 2 to negative pi over 2. 
and then from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then from pi over 2 to uh, 3 pi over 2, and then from 3 pi over 2, it goes to 2 pi, including 2 pi. Now cotangent. I'm going to just draw in yellow real quickly. The, well, we'll just erase this and start over for cotangent. All right, so for cotangent, uh, goes from 0 as your asymptote, uh, to pi, and then 2 pi. These are your asymptotes. Cotangent's a lot easier to draw. And negative 2 pi. And it goes the opposite direction. The thing is you got to know where it's crossing. So it crosses the main function at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and backwards, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. And again, it doesn't increase at all. Where does it decrease? And we start the process over again. It decreases from negative 2 pi to negative 3 pi over 2. No, oh, I'm sorry, to negative pi. Okay, and then from negative pi to 0, and from 0 to pi, and from pi to 2 pi. Those are your decreasing ones. It doesn't increase at all. All right. Use the figure to approximate the following to one decimal place. All right. This is pretty simple. You're just estimating here. The sine of 4. Where's the y value? Radian 4. So, oops. Where's radian 4? So I'm just going to use a quick example here to start. The y value when the radian's 4 looks like, um, I think it's actually 0 0.8, negative 0 0.8. And okay, so now where's the sign negative 1.2? So now we're going negative. Uh, positive 1 is that way, so negative 1 is going to be about right here. Uh, so you got to count it, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, negative 1. Negative 1.1, 1 .1, negative 1 1.2. And that looks like it is, we'll say negative 0.9. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, negative 0.9 on the y axis because this is negative 1 there. Okay, all numbers t between 0 and 2 pi such that the sine of t is equal to 0.5, meaning where's the y value 1 half? One half is right here. So what is that t value? Remember, these are t's. So 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0.5. It's really not exactly the same, but we'll say it's 0.5 for now. Where else? Okay, so we're going to say it's right there. What was that point? 2.1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2.6. All right, so you're really estimating. You're approximating. All right, now I'm going to erase the circle and do the next problem. Okay, the next problem is the sine of 2. Okay, the y value at 2, 0.9. All right, the y value at negative 2.3, 1, 2, oh, negative 2.3. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that's negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 2, 1, 2, 3. What is that y value? Again, I'm just going to say negative 0.8. And then we're for negative 0.2, that's right here. So what are those y values? Uh, I'm sorry, that was going to be... Negative, I gotta erase that just so I can see it again. Negative point two is right here. The y values of that negative point two. Where's the y value? Negative point two. Negative point two is here, so 
you have about, looks like 6.1 or the other direction here. I don't know what this is. Uh, 3.123, 3.3. So what's happening here is A and B, you're looking at the radians and you're giving me the X and Y value. Part C, they want to know what T really would have been given what the answer is. You're doing it backwards on C. All right, so look at number 71, the cosine of four radians. So what is that answer? Okay, so four radians, okay, get rid of this stuff, is right here. So it's the x value at that coordinate. Well, now you got to go up to the x-axis, negative 0.4567, negative 0.7. Okay, cosine the x value at negative 1.2. Negative 1.2, again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 1. We're just going to leave part of that there. 1, 2. So what is that x value? If you go up to that, it looks like 0.4. And then we do C, which you're going backwards. So if you look at um, this, this is like our answers that we just gave. So where is the x value negative 0.6? Well, negative 0.6 is right here. So that means you go up and down to the circle. And what is the radians values of that? So that's 2.12, 2.2, and then you keep going, 4.1 it looks like. And lastly, number 72, uh, the cosine of 2. All right, so the cosine, where's the x value? Um, what is the x value when the radian is 2? So here's 2. What's the x value? We'll say negative 0.4. And what is the x value when the radian is negative 2.3? Okay, so again, you got to count around um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2. 1, 2, 3. So that's negative 2.3. All right, so what is the x value? Um, at negative 2.3. So we're going to say 5, 6. How about next, uh, negative 0.6? And that's it. Good job.